Perfect sense of timing after the Anzac rounds. Fremantle is meeting every challenge before us. They handsomely dealt with Carlton on Saturday night and furthered their cause to sit second place on the AFL ladder. While Collingwood, straight from the MCG, Craig McRae. Well, he's ridden the roller coaster of the day. He's got himself here through the traffic. And it's always good when our coaches are a pair of winners joining us for a chat on Coaches Night. So, Craig, good job. Welcome. Nice to have you here at the desk. Thanks very much. Police escort here from the MCG. Well, I noticed you parked across the driveway. <laughs> I couldn't get a park here. <laughs> he just <laughs> dumped it and he run. Did. He did. He the keys just a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Justin, great to have you with us. Congratulations on the way the season started. Thanks, mates. Justin, just the first phase of your season, has it, has it lifted the horizon for what this team might be capable of this year? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, we never put a ceiling on what we can achieve as a, as a playing group and as a football club. I mean, lots probably been said about our strategic plan that came out and it was really ambitious and, um, you know, we want to be that as a football club. So, um, you know, with the young groups in particular, the last thing you want to do is, is cap them and, and put a ceiling on what they can achieve. And we've been trying to push the boundaries with everything we do across um, the last couple of years, but more, more so over the last pre-season and trying to you know, get as much out of ourselves as we can. And um, I think our start of the season is a reflection of that. This, this might be a simple question. It might require a simple explanation, but... When, when you first took over, Justin, you were identified as a coach who was instilling a defence first, let's get the systems right, and then uh, over time sort of uh, evolve into a greater balance between offence and, and defence. I know it's deeper than what you can answer now, but have you seen or how, how pleased have you been with the, the signs that your, your team is playing both sides of, uh, both, both sides of the game? Yeah, well, we always wanted to be a team that's well balanced in both offense and defense, and I'm, you know, a strong believer that both of those two things complement each other as well as a contest. So, I think as a natural, my natural inc inclination as a coach is to push the defensive actions um, and and get our defensive system set. Um, but we should be able to attack off that. And yeah, I think you're right, Robert. That's been the most pleasing thing this year is we've we've trusted our offense a lot more. Um, we've become a lot more consistent um, in that in that phase of the game and. Um, our, our players are growing in confidence week on week, on week um, off the back of that. It's really funny. Everyone barracks for football teams in this competition. And, and if you're a building team, you think, God, where are we finding small forwards? When are we finding running defenders? And it takes a couple of years. North Melbourne is one team. They're trying to, to develop. But what we're seeing at the, um, with Fremantle, we're seeing guys in that 40, 50, 60 games, 70 games now, really starting to impose themselves in their area of the ground. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, and a lot's been made of our small forwards, and and probably a lot gets made of their offence and their, their goal kicking. But what keeps small forwards in the game is their ability to chase and tackle and, and harass the opposition. And I think that's been the biggest difference in our game this year is just the constant pressure we're bringing the opposition. It's an area of the game we've put a lot of work into over the pre-season, and. Um, that's allowing us to create opportunities um, for our offence closer to goal and before the opposition is able to get set. So, um, yeah, our whole team is buying into that um, me mentality, but our, our small forwards are going to work and, and doing the reps week in, week out. <laughs> Look at it a bit harder and faster. <laughs> Who yells out to you, Justin? Who annoys you in the box? Not annoys, uh, it helps you. <laughs> Uh, they all helped me. We, we actually missed a few soldiers on the weekend with Matty Boyd and, and Josh Carr um, yeah, being in the COVID protocol. So a couple of our um, development coaches stepped up and did a really good job. Um, obviously, lean on Jamie Graham, who's come from um, Crosstown Rivals this year, and, and lean on him a fair bit as well. He does. He looks like an excellent influence here in any team. So we have a benchmark team, Justin, who we're going to measure everybody against, I suspect, for the whole year, Melbourne. And your credentials look like they are measuring up well in a whole lot of different areas. What, what sort of profile are you building on your own team? And is it, is it worthy of comparison to check what it is against the benchmark? Yeah, I, I guess so. Um... Uh, we're, we're trying to be a, a really strong um, contested ball team who, who plays the game in their front half. Um, 
that's something that I've always, you know, really strongly believed in is, you know, the closer you can turn the ball over to your, to your goals, the easier it is to score. So um, quite often we talk about, you know, the offensive side of the game, but the defensive side of the game can make your off offense look um, pretty easy if, you, if you're winning the ball back in the right areas. So, um, yeah, I think we've had um, a lot better continuity in our team, which has helped this year as well. Um, and, I, and I think we're seeing that, especially in our back line. I, I'm really impressed with how our backs have held up under pressure and how they're working together. And, um, you know, that probably didn't happen last year because we had 15 or 16 guys um, go through our back line. So, you know, there's a lot of things that need to fall into place to be able to play um, consistent footy. And, um, you know, we're getting there at the moment, but it's still a really sh uh, small sample size. It's a team game, we know that, but you need some really strong leaders out there and you've got a young fella, Brayshaw, who might be one of the best young leaders in the competition, if not the best and perhaps a, a future captain. You're going to say it's not surprised you where he's got to, but having, having watching him doing it with the lady left for Carlton, Chera, Fife's not on the ground, Mundy's having another really, really solid season, but Brayshaw, there, was, there seemed to be a lot of responsibility going on to this young man and he, he's coming through with flying colours. He's, he's, he's leading the coaches award after six weeks. Yeah, he, he's, he's he's flying, um, and yeah, he's a he's a um, yeah, he's built his game to become a really strong inside outside player. Um, you know, twenty nine possessions and nine score involvements on the weekend, but um, he was most proud of his eight tackles, and a couple of those tackles were goal saving tackles. So he's he's doing it the right way. Um, he's a real connector within our playing group. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a sort of a connector between um, all the young players, but the young, the young and the old. He's got a real, um, you know, ability to connect everyone in the footy club and, and bring others along with him. And yeah, he's on a super trajectory at the moment. When we used to ask Neil Baum how long injured players were out here, he had a stock standard answer: two weeks. <laughs> so that said, Justin, how far away is Nathan Fife? Uh, we think he'll be back at around, probably around 10 in time for Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> is. how, how much um, do you check in on his progress, Justin, just to, to see what that timeline is like and to see how he is progressing? Oh, regularly. Um, yeah, you know, always checking in on how he's going. He's the captain of our footy club, so... My relationship with him is, is really important and, um, you know, he's, he's really good at selling my messages within the playing group and, yeah, so I'm always checking in on him. Um, yeah, we, we quite often talk about when he's, uh, how he's going with his rehab, when he's going to return and, you know, along the lines of what sort of position, game time, you know, he's, he's um, uh, way back into the side and whether he, you know, he needs to play at a lower level or, and all those sorts of things that come under consideration and we spitball and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out closer to his return date. But, um, you know, he's, he's really improved over the last couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, he's on the right trajectory now. If I'm marking my card right, I've got Dusty back for Collingwood yeah. and Fife back for Collingwood. Yeah, Are you marking that same <laughs> card? I, t I tell you, I am as well. I've, yes. been, I've been keeping a close eye on this. They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. With the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Age shall not weary, Arthur Leggett. 103 years old. Let us all live to be like Arthur, mm. uh, who, who did the odes ahead of the Fremantle game. And, Justin, I think you've got the chance to get to know Arthur and uh, what a character he might be. Yeah, he is a terrific character and, yeah, just a, a great story. Um, 103 years old, obviously, and spent four years in, um, as a prisoner of war. Um, yeah, and I'm just really grateful and proud that he got the opportunity to, to, to do, do what he did on the weekend because he was supposed to do it last year and at the last minute um, the game got pulled and there was no crowd and, and no ceremony. So, yeah, it's great to see him there on the weekend looking well and um, he did a great job. That's wonderful, wonderful. Um, some of what transpired on the field, there was one 50-metre penalty for umpire descent. <laughs> I felt like the under over was a bit more than one. No. How do you think the, the how do you think footy went, Craig? 
Oh, look, I think it's just taking a little while to find its course, isn't it? We, we, we've had this probably directive for more than, more than a month now. I know they came to our club a couple of weeks ago and said they're going to really tighten down on, on anything that looks like it's remonstrating. So, um, yeah, we, we put it in front of our playing group and said, hey, let's, let's be leaders in this. Yeah, you can always control everything, but we wanted to not make it a story in our, in our games. Um, it was relaxed. It was relaxed over this weekend. It, it felt... It was. It, it yeah. was. Players were doing that. I mean, this one, he was saying, he was telling me <laughs> it hit the ground 50 metres. OK. What do you think about the stand rule today? It's a big part hang on, of the hang on, game. Don't leave. Sorry. Just don't, don't jump ahead yet. Oh, sorry. Um, because I think, I think Sean Darcy's got the right idea. <laughs> Justin is going to do it. Bit of play school, hands on heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big fella caught himself. And um, yeah, thank God he didn't put the arms out. He just put them on his head. And I, I'm a bit with Craig. These things have a um, habit of levelling himself out. And I, I thought the umpires showed good common sense and the players showed really good restraint on the weekend and yeah it didn't turn out to be as um, dramatic as we might have thought last week so so in here there is uh so i think the players did a great job broadly speaking and there's obviously a level of um of tolerance rather than just hard and fast blowing the whistle and moving which feels frankly very common sense yeah, I, I, I think that's the case. And the players... Um, <laughs> I can see that one. That's, that's very good. We might practice that one ourselves. <laughs> Justin, good to have you with us. Uh, good thanks, luck for Justin. us to come next. Thanks, guys. Craig, well thanks done. for the dash across and well done on today. Yeah, thanks, Craig. Craig McCray and Justin Longmuir with us on Coaches Night on AFL 360.